emotions or feelings, and they can be positive or negative. So if someone's feeling happy and enjoying themselves, they're feeling experiencing positive affect, and if they're sad or angry, they're experiencing negative affect. Um, negative, <laughs> negative events can cause negative affect, such as stress, like school, um, work, and money, money situations. Also, interpersonal relationships, such as family and friends, and also overall poor mental health. So when I decided to look at negative affect, I wanted to find out a way to help people alleviate, if that's the word, um, their negative affect symptoms. And since everyone suffers from this, I thought it would be very relevant. Two coping mechanisms I decided to study were hope and defense mechanisms. And I chose these because hope has been shown to be effective in treatments. And <coughs> in Snyder et al. in 1997, they found there's a positive correlation between hope and self esteem in adults. And they also found that in athletes, there's a they have greater self-esteem than non-athletes, and also within athletes, the ones that had higher hope performed better than those that had lower hope. And hope is part of positive psychology, which is um, basically what it sounds like, so focusing on the positive things and less on like internal mechanisms. And then defense mechanisms is the other coping mechanism I chose to study. This is from psychoanalytic psychology, and DSM-4 uh, defines it as unconscious ways in which people deal with anxiety and danger. So one study by Health et al. found that defense mechanisms after brief cognitive therapy, uh, they lasted after a year after treatment. of defense mechanisms, mature, neurotic, and immature. So immature ones, an example would be denial. So at the bottom, he says, it's not denial. I'm just selective about the reality I choose to accept. And then neurotic is in between immature and mature. And it's not as detrimental as immature, but it's also not as beneficial as mature. So an example of this is altruism, and I can't read that from here, but you can read it. And finally, there's mature defense mechanisms, and <coughs> this example is humor. So this old man's on the couch waiting for the grip breaker to come, and he says, you're late. So he just kind of makes a joke in light of a negative situation. were to determine whether hope has a main effect on change in negative affect, to determine whether defense mechanisms have a main effect on change in negative affect, to see if there was an interaction between the two. And this is more of a goal, but to determine whether combining the two would increase people's ability to cope with negative affect. There were 97 persist participants they were undergraduate psychology students, and um, <coughs> they received some credit for participation. There was five steps to the study. The first one was the PANIS, which is Positive and Negative Affect Scale, by Clark, Watson, and Sullivan. And this scale um, basically asked people how how well they were feeling, like if it said excited, they would have like a one through five option. And then after that, they took the DSHS by Snyder and Simpson, and that was the domain, the, the domain specific hope, hope scale. And so this one tested for a 
two negative events that had occurred within the past year, and one had to be academic and the other relational. Finally, they took the panels again at time two. <coughs> um, we added the academic and relational domain scores to get a total full score, and then we chose four defense mechanisms to study, uh, projection, isolation, altruism and anticipation. And we chose those because of the 88 questions on the DSQ, there's varied questions for, for each uh, mechanism. So for humor, there's only two questions pertaining to that. And so we didn't feel like that was something that we could, could look at. But then like projection had like eight questions pertaining to that. So we decided to choose that. And we also chose them based on <coughs> correlations. So these ones have the highest correlation with the most amount of questions. After all the data was taken in, we performed a regression analysis. Um, this is just a table of partial correlations controlling for negative affect at time one. So if you look here, negative affect at time two, and then three is, or two is hope. So there's a 0 0.3132, negative 0 0.32, which is uh, significant. And down here, well, down there, um, P is less than 0 0.05. But don't get confused, because these are all greater than that. But their P values were less than 0 0.05. And these are the correlation coefficients. So that means from 0 to 1, 0 is there's no relationship, and one means 100% positive relationship. So some of them are negative, and that means that for the first one, negative affect increases as hope increases, or <laughs> negative affect decreases as hope increases. only really need to look at this number right here. And so this is um, controlling for different parts. So step one, you control for the pattern. And basically, each step you control for something different. So it's determining which um, independent variables have greater influence on the dependent variable. So that would be the independent variables would be all the defense mechanisms, and the dependent would be negative affect. And those are just the R squared values. Okay, so we hypothesized that projection was going to um, result in higher increases in negative affect, and that was confirmed. However, um, isolation didn't show this, and that was also an immature defense mechanism. So that was sort of like a 50-50 on that one. And projection was also the only defense mechanism that showed any significance. Hope confirmed our hypothesis that higher hope resulted in lower levels of affect, or increased affect at time two. And then some Issues with the research was generalizability because it was all like freshman psychology students. Also, the research setting was in a, a classroom and it wasn't in like an actual like therapy setting. And then correlations were not controlled for um, were self-esteem and self-efficacy, and those are highly correlated with um, with hope. And the difference between those is hope is a belief that things will be good in the future, and self-efficacy is that you believe like in your ability to achieve things. Um, <coughs> also, there's the possible limitations to the survey because there's some debate about um, about surveys and determining like defense mechanisms, and so if people were using immature defense mechanism, mechanisms, they could pot potentially deny like behaviors that they actually have. Future directions are to move the, the research into a therapeutic setting to study the differences between males and females because we didn't address that. And also to possibly create a longitudinal study which would be sort of similar to what we did but they would take the PANAS at time one, and then they would take 
didn't measure that. We just measured like what their levels were up there. Can you provide some um, common defense mechanisms that people would choose? <laughs> about your participants? Um, we didn't actually really <laughs> look at that much. Like I was saying, we didn't look at male or female or trios or anything like that. Um, so there's not a whole lot there. <laughs> Sorry, I know there's 97 participants and that's basically what we know. Mm -hmm. Slip, man. 